So welcome to this semester. This is going to be the, the section of digital art uh, for fall 2023 where we use mostly Adobe Creative Cloud products. But I'm also going to show you how you can use online freeware clones of those products, mostly Photoshop, uh, to do the projects from any computer where you have internet access. You can navigate the course through the unit modules or through the sidebar modules. They're both the same things. I just like the more visual approach. And what we just finished doing in our first, our first day of instruction, playing around, getting to know things, was these exercises, right? And these exercises were basically just making a digital avatar of ourselves and then posting them. What we want to do is to clean up those posts. So whenever you post, and it's always good to post by the deadline, you have the ability to edit your own posts. And then I, as the instructor, have the ability to edit everyone's posts. So I'm going to edit these ones. And then for the next one, I want you to edit your own if any editing is needed. The simple edit is going to be, because we're looking on them on a shared space, and this is screen resolution, not print resolution, we want the images not to be enormous. right? So we're just going to click on the images, if they're too big or too small, and squeeze them to fit right under our name. And if they don't go under our name, because that's going to look nicer, right? like it's in a museum, then we're just going to use the return key to do that. All that's needed for this assignment is your name and then your avatar image. And as long as it's not too huge under your name, it's fine. So we edit, and you shrink down. And we can do, multiple people can be doing this at the same time. And then I'm just going to use the arrow key. When you have a, an image selected, you'll see that blue box. I'm going to use the arrow key to go backwards, to go right before the blue box, and then just hit return to put the name on top. And remember to use the name you want to be called in the class. And then your last name is registered. So edit, squeeze it, arrow key if you need to put a space, and then if there are multiple images, just like if you're decorating you know, a room in your house, it's not great to put posters right next to each other. So if you want space between, you can again collect the image, use the arrow key to go back, and then you can put some spaces to arrange it. What's nice about that is it's also formatted within Canvas, just like a lot of websites are. So if the formatting squeezes enough, like it goes on a phone or something, they will tile. So some of them are missing your name. We'll get better at that. Even though I know your name is on the post, the problem is that these are the ones as registered in the class. So it might not be your nickname or what you actually want to be called. All right. And then when you have problems, right? We had the question about Imgur, which is in the directions. This will be at the bottom of every assignment we do, this portion. The thing to remember about that is that it's for the end of the semester. So this will be when we finished off all of our work. We're going to choose five pieces to print for our portfolio, but also to put up to Imgur for long-term storage. So do not worry about this as we're creating work. Instead, we just want to get credit for the work. And to do that, we, we post it here. And then we'll be printing three of these from the first half of the semester at the midterm. And that gives us time to improve our work even past the deadlines. So much of digital art, especially when you get into design and campaigns, websites, um, it's all about kind of organization, standardization, and having kind of a clear design sense. And professionally, those things together are just called visual, viscom, or visual communication skills. So we're going to be working to build those for you. And a lot of it is understanding formatting, how things are going to be seen by the, the consumer. In this class, your fellow classmates and me. All right, so like I said, I will edit all of these. 
So we have a nice critique form for it. But then you're going to edit the next one you did, which is where you had your IDs, where you had it, your image, but then you also had some of that information, like your talent codes and the words describing your best self. Okay, I wanted to show you this as well. It's why the class, it's recommended to engage with Canvas through a, uh, a laptop or through a tablet rather than through a phone. Though this is still putting your work up there and it can still get credit, none of us can see it, right, without first downloading it. So when we download something from the internet, it goes to this folder that's next to your trash. It's called mm -hmm. downloads. In order to post an image rather than to attach it, or sometimes this is called embedding an image, though embedding is usually meaning that you're posting an image from another website, and so that other website has to be used in the process. That's embedding. Posting is when you upload an image all the way to be viewed within the format of the, the site. So to do that, we use the, the dots here to get to our posting options. We use the, the landscape looking icon and we say upload image. And we'll get good at this, we'll practice it a lot. And then on a map, you can just drag and drop it in and then submit. And it will come in at the native resolution of the image. So often, that's when you need to shrink it down a bit. But I like the variety in these images. They're great. Some of them use some of the, the AI tools. Some of them just use other digital tools. And then, this is a good reminder. I had Josh do this on that Mona Lisa drawing thing. So if you want to force yourself to do a sketch within 60 seconds, you can go to those intro slides and do that Mona Lisa challenge and draw whatever you want in 60 seconds. I've actually come to enjoy that as a, an exercise, right? Like a discipline of a really quick sketch with really limited tools. So this is the next thing we posted. We put our picture with this. So if you want to edit it, if you need to shrink it down, if you need to add any content, add your name. This is the one that really matters, right? These are the images I will use uh, throughout the class for you. Now, if I go to next, that was the end of the, the first module. It takes us to the next module or the next oh. unit, right? So we can get to it that way, or we can get to it through modules. So we're now doing unit two, digital image mining and compositing layers. Or you can do it the way I showed the class at the beginning, using my unit modules where I have nice little animated GIF icons for everything. And we're in unit two now. So why do I call it image mining? Because a lot of this, an aspect of compositing is using pixels from different sources. They can be pixels that we generate from our, through our own artwork or, or our own uh, photographs, and we'll be doing some of that. But for this exercise, just the introduction to compositing, we're going to sample from found images of black line art. So basically coloring book kind of images. And that's all you're going to be allowed to use. You're not going to be able to create any of your own content. You're going to have to use established line art that you have the rights to use. And that's important. And we're going to cover this in multiple ways. I'm going to be introducing Photo P to you, as well as Adobe Photoshop, Pixabay to you, as well as something called Google AutoDraw. So this is just the overviews. And, but the only deliverable for this is finishing exercise one, and it's due next class. And because of the Labor Day holiday, that next class isn't until September 6th, a week from today. I always will give you past examples, both past student examples and past instructor examples. And I don't really want you to be able to tell what was done by the instructor or what was done by a student, because we get some really good work in this class. And sometimes I really screw up. So it all washes together. If you want more examples, you can click on Imgur, and this is what's happening with Imgur just lately. You click on it, nothing appears, so you have to refresh. I'm not sure why that is. But it's probably because you need to also be logged into the class, right? 
And you do that through the links page on our homepage. But this will be where students who felt that their line art jumble was good enough to be in their final portfolio, because you have to have a minimum of five, but you can definitely do more, they put it up here. So just more variety. Once we do the line art with black lines, I'll show you as an option how you can add color to those black lines. But you can get full credit for the exercise without ever adding color. Some instructor examples. Remember, remember Imgur is just, just for your reference right now until the end of the semester. And then I am recording right now. And what I'm recording is a video for our YouTube page. So you can always look at past semesters. And you can find the project we're look, looking, looking, working on. Excuse me. So exercise one from last semester, you can see it from both sections, one with Adobe Creative Cloud, one with uh, freeware using PhotoP. These playlists are in 15 minute increments. So last semester it took me seven 15 minute segments to demonstrate it fully. And it looks like I used Alex Toth stuff last semester. He's a great character designer for Hanna-Barbera. So those resources are always there to you and they're always being updated. So now let's go to the actual assignment. So on assignments, I've tried this in various ways. I've tried making it really rigid for students where they have to do a theme that I assign. And I've tried not assigning themes at all. And what seems to work best is to suggest a theme <laughs> so that students who don't have any better ideas for their own portfolio, for their own uses, will just follow the theme that's given because I think it's a worthwhile theme. But if you want to branch out of that, you can. And sometimes I'll branch out of that because I get tired of some of these themes. But the suggested theme I used last semester was a favorite cartoon theme. And the one I used the semester before that was a banned book theme. So it can be almost anything, right? Places you can see line art. If you think of a favorite cartoon strip from a newspaper, Peanuts, Calvin and Hobbes, Garfield, right? There's lots of line art available for those things. If you think of your favorite animated show, you know, whether it's anime, whether it's um, Family Guy, you know, whatever it might be, there's lots of line art available for that. If you think of content that you like, I love unicorns. Believe me, there are a lot of coloring books with unicorns, which means there's a lot of line art available for unicorns. On and on. The key is Garfield is owned by a corporation, right? Calvin and Hobbes is owned by a corporation. Family Guy is owned by a corporation. So how do you make original artwork out of something that's owned by someone else? Here are some professional examples, and then some past student examples that have gone on to be professionals. My favorite is this uh, fine artist named Arturo Herrera. And Arturo Herrera, I saw his work first at the, the, in LA, but he comes from Colombia, I believe, and he still works with mural designs and all kinds of things today. What's cool about Arturo Herrera is his kind of breakout work, the stuff that I first saw at the Armory Show in LA in the 1990s, was all cutouts of line art uh, made into really big paintings that hung on the wall. Sometimes they were cut out of felt. In this case, they were cut out of uh, like kind of painted collage that he had made. Yes, so all the line art he used for this show was from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, which is ballsy because Disney is the most litigious company on the planet. Right? But notice what he did with that line art. It's pretty tough to recognize. He took out all immediately recognizable signifiers from those characters, right? So there's no eyes, there's no mouths or expressions. Instead, you just have the lines of the fabric and the hands and the tools. And he also combined lots of that together into his own shape, right? Even though he's not drawing any of it himself. And Disney has never sued him. These are some past students, uh, Mark and Angela, who formed a, uh, a graphic design company